Today I wanted to show you guys and talk about something that we refer to as calcific tendonitis and especially the procedure called ultrasound guided barbitage. So this is a patient that originally had developed severe shoulder pain, severe shoulder pain especially with abduction which is, means reaching above, um, above our head. When we looked at, uh, at her x-rays we see this big calcification, we call it heterotrophic calcification in here. Quite large, she, she originally saw few other providers before she, she got sent to me. We have tried injections, physical therapy, shockwave, and a few other modalities to try to break this calcification and there nothing was really working. She was uh, ex extremely debilitated and uh, especially with her activities of daily living. I think she's, uh, if I recall correctly, she had been like this for over six months to a year. Well, there's a procedure. Traditionally, if uh, the non-surgical treatments don't work, we could go in there surgically and do an arthroscopic debridement and suck out some of that calcium. And, uh, and try to get rid of that, that heterotrophic calcification. But that involves surgery, going to the operating room, either at an outpatient surgical center or in the hospital. Um, and some patients do not want to go through the surgical procedure. Now there's another way where we are able to remove that calcium in the office with local anesthesia. So what we do is we first identify the calcification both on, on x-rays with radiograph, but also with the ultrasound because it's soft tissue and allows me to directly get inside this calcium deposit here and with a special technique using normal saline, we're able to break that calcium up and suck it out. We aspirate it, we call that barbitage procedure. So I'm gonna show you um, a, few perce a few pictures of the actual procedure. The first thing is what with the, uh, the x-ray and the ultrasound, we're able to get exactly inside the calcium. I had already done some, some barbitage on this, so you can see that the calcium is getting better. And ultimately, this is how how it looks. We can't always get 100% of the calcium out, but most of the time we can if it's done the right way. So this is the, the post-procedure uh, x-ray when we, were, we took all the calcium out. Now it's important, and in my experience, whenever the calcification is more than a centimeter, centimeter 1.5, there's usually going to be a rotator cuff tear because as we take out, I'm going to go back to, this, to the first picture, as we take out the big chunk of bone, the big chunk of calcium, we're, we're left with a void. A void sometimes tend, tends to be a, a tear. Now, in this particular scenario where the calcium was deposited in the supraspinatus tendon, she, there was a rotator cuff tear that was, uh, that was there uh, after we removed the, the calcium. So what I typically recommend, if the calcium is more than 1.5 centimeters, or one 1.5 centimeters, in her case it was almost three centimeters, we recommend we inject some form of biologic agent to try to stimulate the body to regenerate normal tendon, or at least help the body repair that, that void that, that, um, that is there when we take the calcium, or whether with PRP or growth factors from the, platelet, the patient's own uh, platelets, or somatologous bone marrow derived mesenchymal stem cells. I also want to show you how that looks like on the ultrasound, because we did take a, uh, a, a video. Um, I'm going to come in here because you could actually see as we are getting inside the calcium. This is a little video, you see my needle inside the calcium. At this point, I had almost finished the barbitage procedure and you could see as I am opening up how there is such a large void, a large rotator cuff tear. So after we took all of the calcium, we confirmed with, again, the x-ray and the ultrasound, we were able to re-inject um, platelet-rich plasma. Very high concentration, that's the other thing, we need to get very high concentration of growth factors. We injected about 10, to 20 billion platelets inside that, that rotator cuff tear. We also bathed the supraspinatus, infraspinatus tendon, and the subacromosome delta inverso as well. Hopefully we could get her, get her body to stimulate a good healing response. She's gonna be in a sling for about two or three days over the weekend. It's usually not that painful, not that uncomfortable. And then she's gonna start her normal life out back on Monday, today is Friday. There is gonna be a physical therapy protocol that's gonna go for the next four to six weeks. We'll see her again in about six weeks and repeat the x-ray and see how she's doing functionally, not only with the x-rays, but also with our sonographic examination of that rotator cuff tear to see how well that's healing. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, and if you have someone that uh, has been diagnosed with calcific tendonitis. Now, this is a shoulder. It could happen really in any tendon. We typically see it more in the shoulder. It could happen in the hips. I actually done some hips. I actually done some in the, and even the foot, also in the knee. We, it could, any tendon can develop calcification within it. If you failed conservative therapy and surgery has been an option, has been brought about by your physician, talk to him about it if they know the barbitage procedure because it could, do, it could be done in the office with a down, uh, less downtime and much quicker recovery. Take care.